Hey everyone, welcome to today's video where we will be talking about Framer's powerful animation possibilities. We're going to be talking about text effects like you just saw right here. We're going to be talking about, about appear effects, um, scroll animations, different scroll sections, tickers, and I think my personal favorite, which is basically component animations or interactive components, as you can see here. So um, we're going to be talking a little bit about that. I'm going to be showing you kind of like the principles of animating in Framer, what are the, the, the basic things to, to know and to apply to, to your everyday Framer products. So if that's something that you're interested in, um, please stay tuned and enjoy this video. And by the way, if you really like these components that you're seeing, I'm using um, a tool called FrameBlocks and FrameBlocks has a bunch of different built-in sections that you can use um, for your Framer project. It helped me a bunch in saving time for building some stuff. So I totally recommend you use that. I have the, the link to, to frame blocks in the description below. Um, but anyways, let's get started. So the first thing that I want to talk about is text animation. So right now, if I were to press play, our text is kind of static, right? No movement. We want some movement here. So the first thing that we can do is we can apply a effect here. So for this one, we want to apply a simple text effect. And what Framer gives us as a default text effect is the blur um, the blur effect, so blur by character. So if we were to go back here, you can see a quick preview. It, it triggers on the appear. Every time you click on this box, you can see the previews, by the way. So it, it triggers on the appear, which means that um, when the user uh, when the specific element appears on the, on the page, then it triggers, right? So for example, if I were to, let's say, copy this section, bring it down here, and, and, and this is also on appear, you might think that, okay, it, it's gonna, the effect is gonna happen once the, the user uh, sees it, but no, it actually uh, happens as the page renders because it appears as the page renders, right? And in order to do it in the other way, if we don't, if we wanted to kind of appear while we, while we scroll down, we can do something like um, section and view, right? So right now we, we only have this other section, which is down here. We don't want to use it. But to, in order to give us, uh, uh, in order to uh, make a new scroll section, we basically have to, let's rename this there like this and go down here to the right side, we have something called scroll section. So we can uh, click on this, press two, and then go back to our text animation and section and view two, right? So now let's go back up here. And then down here, you saw that it basically renders as this section appears. So that's, um, basically simple text animations what you can also do is the appear so instead of um, going down here instead of choosing the uh the text you can also just choose a simple appear one so on appear fade in effect transition maybe you can do something like you can adjust these settings like make it one set one second long so if we were to go like this we can also adjust the delay to be a little bit more by going back here, um, going here, setting the, the delay to maybe more than half a second. So, and basically refining it to your own liking, right? Maybe this would take two seconds. So it's a nicer, you know, fade in, right? So this is basically with, with the text um, animations, right? Now, before you saw like these cool animations on the right side, I just deleted them right now and I'm gonna redo them for you. So basically the first thing that I wanna see is I wanna go click on this stack of the image, not the image itself, and go to effects. And I wanna look at these, right? So there's hover, there's press, there's loop, there's drag. So let's just click on the hover and see how, how that kind of reacts. So when the hover, then the tech, then the image actually gets a little bit larger, right? So that's one effect, but then there's other stuff like, 
for example, a press effect. So if we were to come here and press on the image, it would go down. So that's one way of doing it. We can delete this and we can do a, a loop, for example, and a loop, we can do something like, um, let's just leave it like this and see how it looks like. Okay, it looks kind of crappy, right? Because it's going pretty fast in a 360 degree angle or rotation, I, I would say. So let's adjust this, let's make it zero and kind of see how that would look like. Okay, it stays still. But what if we want like a little bit of like a floating movement? What we can do is we can go here, maybe decrease this by, let's say maybe 12 and see how that reacts. Okay, it's getting there, but it's not really floating. Um, let's make it float. I want that float effect. And in order to, to achieve that, let's just click on the mirror. And basically what mirror does is that it mirrors the effect going up and down. So now we have this nice little floating effect. We can make it the effect, uh, you know, we can adjust certain things of the effect, like the time. So if we were to go like this, for example, it would take longer time to go down and longer time to go up, right? So that's one of the ways to do this creative thing. Um, we can also choose these images, which are basically, by the way, absolute positioned. So that's why they're in above and over the image. So that's a, a good tip for you to know. And with these images, you can select multiple things and apply an effect. So we can apply, for example, a drag effect. Let's see how that looks like. So if I were to go here and drag this around, it would kind of look like this and it would basically snap back to the original position. So that's one way of using this drag effect. Another way of using this drag effect would be removing this free form and maybe going like this, maybe momentum. So with the free form, basically it doesn't drag back to its location, just moves around the screen to wherever it goes in that, in where it's, uh, to the, to the parent layer where it's relative to. So in this case, it's this section, right? So let's, we can just remove that. We can go back to our settings and, and, um, remove that. Yes, to snap back. And what else can we do? We can add another type of, uh, you know, effect. We can add a loop effect like we did before. Maybe set it to, to about five. So it also kind of, we have to obviously take away the 360. But we can do something like this where it also like kind of, you know, balances with the image. Now, the next thing I want to do is look at the different scroll effects, right? So we saw the appear, we saw the different creative ones, like the loop, drag, hover, and press. Now let's look at these different scroll ones. So the scroll animation, scroll animation is basically like on scroll, um, it fades out to something like this. So on scroll, it fades out, but it stays in this specific position. Um, let's look at another scroll animation. So for scroll speed, we can set the scroll speed to be 40%. And what would happen is that it would take a longer time to scroll out of the, the, the viewport, right? So if we were to look at this, as you can see, it's kind of like taking long to scroll out. This would be cool for like some type of parallax effect to apply to your site, right? And the next thing that I want to show you is the scroll transform, which is actually my favorite one because it's kind of pretty, um, you can do pretty creative things here. So on scroll, you can set the opacity to one and the scale to one. Let's leave it as, as it is. And actually, let me just do this with one at a time. So for this one on scroll from one to, let's set the opacity to zero and let's set the offset. Let's make it in the middle of this section and let's put it all the way at the bottom. So that means that as I scroll down, this is basic, these, these images are gonna basically go down underneath the image, underneath this main image, right? And let's do the same with this. So two, zero, and let's put this in the middle 
and put it underneath the main image. And now let's watch and see how this reacts. So if I were to scroll down, as you can see, they're basically scrolling down underneath this image and fading away. And then when I scroll back up, they go back to their position. So that's basically um, the basics of, of scroll animations in Framer. And now the next thing that, that I want to show you, which is pretty easy, and I see it in, in several uh, Framer projects, which is basically this uh, ticker, right? And with a ticker, you it's very easy to build because you just have to you know start typing ticker and it's there. And then what you do is you just drag it and you set the width to fill. You set the height to about uh, 50 pixels. And then you can connect it to different elements, let's say to the stack of text. And it will basically pop up. And the basic, the, the general settings is that is a, is a very fast speed. So we can adjust the speed like to the one below, which is about maybe 25%. And we can adjust the gap to about 50%, right? We don't even need this bottom one anymore. And then we can press play and boom, it's there. A nice little ticker animation. And now the final type of animation that I want to show you, which I think personally is what sets Framer apart from tools like Webflow or WordPress is this component interactivity, this component animation. So basically if I were to go here, we have components this is a, its own component and if you were to hover over these different points you would get a nice reaction to your hover and then you can click on one and it would basically show you a different variant of that component that you were hovering over so for example the component would be this circle with this plus sign the hover uh, variant would be a, a little bit larger circle and then if you click on it, the variant would look like this, which you can actually connect to your uh, Framer database, your Framer CMS to uh, products, which can eventually link to, uh, you know, tools like Shopify, for example. If you're interested in that, please comment below and I'll let you know um, what type of videos to watch for that. I have a few. Um, but basically, this is what I mean by a Framer, uh, a component animation. So if you were to click here, you can see that this is a component. These components have different image vari variables. So if you were to go back here, you can set the images here. And then each one has its own pop-up, which by the way I have here, it would look like this. You have variant one with the hover. And then once you click on this or you click on this, it takes you to this variant. And once you leave the mouse, then it, it takes you back to variant one. So. This is a, a, a very powerful example of, of building components, um, animated components. If you're really interested in this, also let me know in the comments below and I will make sure to uh, uh, make a, a, an advanced tutorial on framer, uh, framer component animations because this is what I believe is very powerful. I also have a link in the description to this particular section if you wanna download it and test it out yourself. Um, and yeah, basically that's it. So Framer with this component animation, you know, in, in Webflow, for example, you can build like a nice landing page with a cool screenshot um, with a few little, you know, light animations of your product. But in Framer, you can actually like make this screenshot kind of interactive with a component. You can add the UI, you can add some buttons on the UI and make the different uh, variants based on the interactions of the user. So that was it everyone. I hope you liked this video today. I hope you learned something. This is basically like the, the very basics of, of, of uh, Framer animations, of learning how to animate in Framer. If you like this type of content, please um, don't forget to like and subscribe. That really helps me a lot. And, and I'm very passionate about helping people understand Framer. Um, I'm, I'm passionate about helping them build great products using Framer. So if you're into that too, please let me know in the comments below. I'd love to know more about you. And other than that, I hope you guys have a great day and thanks for sticking around. Thanks, bye-bye.